In this example, I'm going to go ahead and work out the exact value for the secant of 75 degrees. And so first, let's go ahead and recall that secant is a reciprocal function with cosine. And so the secant of some angle theta is going to be equivalent to 1 over the cosine of that same angle theta. So we can go ahead and employ the sum identity for cosine that says the cosine of, and we have the sum of these two angles, A and B, has this expansion. All right, well, so we need two angles, A and B, that add up to 75 degrees, but that are also easy to work with because we're going to take the sine and the cosine of both angles, A and B. So if the secant of 75 then can be rewritten as 1 over the cosine of 75, let's go ahead and find those two angles. So for 75 degrees, how about we use 45 and 30? Because 45 degrees and 30 degrees, we know, add up to 75 degrees. And also, uh, 30 and 45 are easy to work with because we know the sine and cosine for both 30 and 45 degrees. So let's go ahead then and find uh, these values using this expansion formula. So we have 1 over, and it's going to be the cosine of 45 times the cosine of 30 minus the sine of 45 times the sine of 30. Go ahead and extend that fraction bar over. All right, so that's nice because we know all these values. So cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. So from that, we're going to subtract the sine of 45, which is also the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 30, which is 1 half. So let's go ahead and work these products and see what we have. It's 1 over. So it looks like when I multiply, it's going to be the square root of 6 over 2 times 2, which is 4, minus the square root of 2 over, well, that same denominator, 2 times 2 is still 4. Okie dokie. So 1 over, we can go ahead and put these as a single denominator now that the denominators are the same. So this is what we have right now. But remember, this 1 over idea is the reciprocal function in play. So what we need to do is just go ahead and turn this fraction over. So it's going to be 4 over the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. But maybe we don't like these radicals in the denominator. So let's go ahead and rationalize this denominator. So we'll rationalize by multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate just means I'm going to go ahead and change the sign in the middle. So instead of the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, let's go ahead and multiply by the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. And we'll also put parentheses around all those critters. All right, well, why would this be nice? It's because in the denominator, it sets up this difference of squares factorization, where I have this a minus b and a plus b. So when I multiply, I'm only concerned with multiplying the first terms and the last terms together. So I'm not going to distribute this, and I'll show you why in a second. So I have four times this uh, quantity, this expression here. And the denominator, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is 6. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And we're subtracting there. 6 minus 2, well, that's 4. And these 4s cancel. So you can see exactly why we didn't distribute that 4 through there. All right, so the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2, that is going to be my exact value for the secant of 75 degrees. And we found that by using the reciprocal function here, 1 over cosine, and then by employing the sum identity for cosine that has this expansion. So here's that value one more time for the secant of 75 degrees.